Welcome to episode 18 of the SWNZ podcast, the podcast for New Zealand Star Wars fans. My name is Matt. And my name is Christy. Hey, I want to start by talking about the fact that today is SWNZ's 21st birthday. Started in 2000 with a pretty lightweight website, and at that point we were reporting on local Star Wars news. Over the last 21 years, we've undergone quite a few changes and quite a lot of growth. And with a few sort of major changes in 2003, we did a bit of a rebrand and a relaunch of the website to include focus on New Zealand Star Wars collectibles and New Zealand celebrities and, you know, the the role that Kiwis have played in the Star Wars universe. But it's been a fun ride over the last couple of decades. And it's been really exciting to be able to expand into a whole new array of social media networks and platforms. And we've really enjoyed being able to network with the local community and really appreciate the fact that people want to get involved and talk to other Star Wars fans um, through different channels. It's really fun seeing the local Star Wars fan community really grow over all these years, going from seeking out people online in those very early days, going along to swap meets to try and, you know, meet up with other collectors, to obviously the sort of evolution of social media where we have this incredible network of way that we can find and talk to fellow Star Wars fans both locally and internationally and of course the way that Star Wars has evolved over those 20 years we've gone from three films to oh my gosh sequels (laughs) and then you know (laughs) prequels and like everything else tv shows and that so it's really you know there were times where it looked like there was just going to be the diehards riding it out into the sunset but then each new sort of evolution of the Star Wars saga has has introduced new fans and really winded it and now it's clear it's never going to die out it's gonna there's gonna be merchandise and more fans and events and tv shows to keep us going for many many years to come yeah so today's a a really fun day to be able to do a podcast and talk talk to the audience out there uh, and to say thank you for listening in and thank you for supporting us anyway let's jump into things uh we're going to run through quite a bit today because there's some really exciting news a bunch of announcements over the last week or two that we really want to hit on and really key timing on Disney Plus tonight there's literally a whole big chunk of new vintage Star Wars content that's been released some of it we never really we were a little bit worried that we wouldn't actually be able to see on Disney Plus we'll cycle back around and talk about that and we'll finish off by talking about some local store reports the first thing I want to talk about though is the Bad Batch trailer which came out in Star Wars Bad Batch animated series uh, showing up on Disney Plus very shortly May the 4th the trailer screened a couple of days ago. We've got a comprehensive screen cap gallery on SWNZ, so you can page through screen caps from each of the scenes. So that's quite fun to have Star Wars content so close on the horizon. I know a lot of people are excited about this. It's essentially a continuation of the Clone Wars, same sort of animation style, using the characters introduced in the final season of the Clone Wars. The trailer lets us know that we're also going to see Ming Na Wen lent her voice to Fennec Shan, the bounty hunter first introduced in The Mandalorian. We see the return of Tarkin. Uh, he's actually on Kamino with the Kamino Wind Prime Minister, Lama Su, and some interesting things going on there. Yeah, this might not be at the top of everyone's exciting list, but it's a neat filler considering we need to wait until towards the end of the year around December for the new live action stuff. So this is a great little sort of mid weight boost so i'm excited to check it out yeah it's good filler it'll be coming through every week and it's it's genuine star wars content and it's based on a a strong lineage so i think it's going to be quite satisfying in that regard it does make me wonder if we'll see them continually pull little side stories because the clone wars is kind of finished so they know how popular that is with a huge um section of the fandom so it'll be interesting to see if this is a bit of a nod that they're going to continue because resistance wasn't quite as well received as some of these other shows so we're seeing disney kind of cycle back around to the beloved clone wars and we're starting to see a few sort of extra little stretch stories so it's interesting well i guess we'll have to wait and see whether how well this one does or maybe they've even already started on another little offshoot side project in that same Clone Wars animation style yeah you're right there's a lot there's there seems to be a lot of evidence and rumor of overlap between the series that's coming out now and the inclusion of Fennec Shand in the Bad Batch for instance and we know Fennec Shand's going to show up in the book of Boba Fett later 
those are strong overlaps and and picking up threads from existing content and and, and reworking them and you know there's rumors about are we going to see Ezra in a live action or an animated series at some point uh, particularly if we've got the likes of Ahsoka showing up we know that's going to happen uh, so yeah lots of rumors and potential discussion that will possibly develop over the next little while so Bad Batch showing up on Disney Plus May the 4th uh, we'll get it on that date in New Zealand as well I'm super excited about the out of the blue announcement about the Obi-Wan Kenobi series cast uh, that hit the official channels in the past week. Obi-Wan is going to start filming in this month this month um, for a release uh, early next year. So slightly off cycle compared to the release of The Mandalorian, which was later in the year. It sounds like we're going to get Obi-Wan early in the year. But the cast announcement is fantastic. We knew that Hayden Christensen was going to reprise his role of Darth Vader in some shape or form, and that's been reconfirmed. I love the fact that Joel Edgerton and Bonnie Pease are returning as Owen and Beru Lars. That's, I, I was really hoping that the, you know, the ages are right. Um, there's strong potential for that. I was really hoping that that would be the case, and it transpires that, that it will be. So I look forward to that a lot. A uh, big deal that Simone Kessel, a Kiwi name, is listed in that uh, lineup of a dozen named cast members. Uh, Simone Kessel was pretty well known in New Zealand in the early 90s. She was a host of a kids' uh, TV television show, The Cartoon Company, and has shown up on a number of different local productions, a number of the, the Hercules uh, series, for instance, and then went off and did a bunch of stuff in Australia, uh, Water Rats and so forth, with um, Jay Lagar, I think, from memory. Um, but really... We, we on SWZ always love it when New Zealand celebrities show up in the Star Wars universe. It's just so cool. And a bunch of other names, some of which I recognise, some of which you might recognise, um, but an exciting spread. And it'll be interesting to see what sort of characters they end up playing. Moses Ingram, well known from uh, the recent Netflix series The Queen's Gambit. Sun Kang, who many of us remember from the Fast and the Furious uh, series, in particular Tokyo Drift. Kumail Nanjiani from The Big Sick, and Indira Varma, I think she was most well known from uh, her role in Game of Thrones. Rupert Friend, who many will recognise from Hitman Agent 47. Christy here. <laughs> I recognise him from the more recent Pride and Prejudice film, and from The Young Victoria, uh, where he plays the, the love interest. Um, O'Shea Jackson Jr. Uh, played Ice Cube in Straight Outta Compton. And Benny Safdie, uh, who is a, a shade more obscure, he's done a lot of directing, played roles in a number of different short films and independent films. Yeah, super fun lineup. Not due to see the final result on screen for another year, but with production you know, kicking off very shortly, we may hear or end or see more about that over the few next coming months, rest of the year. Well, I'm hoping they do give us a trailer and they don't just completely keep us in the dark. I mean, that could be in their playbook, but yeah, the fact that they've got Owen and Baru in that lineup is super exciting. I, I'm always excited when Lucasfilm pulls back uh, actors and actresses that have played characters and they stay loyal and they bring them back. To, no matter how long it's been, you know, they'll bring them back to play the same character. And this is all but confirmation that we have at least some scenes on Tatooine because I always got the vibe that Owen and Baru don't like travel. They've lived on Tatooine their entire life. You know, the way that they talk about, you know, like Luke always looking to the stars, it always feels like they're very much grounded on Tatooine. Yeah, so I right. feel like, yeah. And then, of well, course, that begs the question it certainly does. I know whether going. Luke is going to be in here in some form. If a 10-year-old actor showed up on the casting list, it would be a big giveaway. But the fact that You've got his adoptive parents, and there's going to be scenes on Tatooine. Yeah, Unless so they kind of keep it really vague, and he's always, like, off working on oh, <laughs> moisture like, evaporators or something. But I'm kind of crossing my fingers. We might see, like, a really young Luke. Yeah, I so mean, Obi-Wan can Kenobi, fun. the series that's set 10 years after Revenge of the Jedi. Um, so, concretely, Luke Skywalker is 10 years old. Yeah. If Owen and Beru are there, even if he doesn't play a significant role in the plot of an episode where they're going to tease, they're going to reveal yeah. something, they're going to, I don't know, throw in some quirky Toshi Station line or, yeah. or, or in joke along those lines. But yeah, that's about 
I mean, it's a year away. Yeah. And, yeah. We don't, so, know, we don't know the exact month, but approximately a year. Which I kind of do enjoy the timing of the TV series. Back when we were in the sort of the cadence of movie releases, it was two to three years between each one, with very little in between. You know, some books. You know, sometimes when we were in the Clone Wars era, there would be animated shows for a few months to look forward to. But with the pacing and the releasing of these live action TV series, we're actually not really having to wait too long between them, especially once they get this juggernaut rolling, when we get, you know, Boba, Mandalorian, Kenobi, Andor, Ahsoka, it's going to be absolutely constant, so it's, we're going to be like not waiting very long at all between these things once they really start going. Okay, so I'm going to run through all of the series and movie announcements that we know very shortly, but I just want to hit on the the um, upcoming Boba Fett series, the book of Boba Fett starring Timura Morrison as Boba Fett. We don't know a lot about that apart from what he looks like because that's how he was seen at the end of the last season of The Mandalorian. That's due out in December of this year. And interestingly, just recently, um, was it The Project interviewed him from LA where he talked about his training for the series. He talked about filming for the series and what they were doing um, in terms of health and safety and the, you know the difference is, is to how filming, how production was, you know, being produced o- over there uh, under these circumstances. But it was fun to hear that he was actively ramping up, mm. preparing for that, uh, yeah. working on that, uh, and having him in the title as the title character of an upcoming series again. Super exciting! I love what they've done with. With the armor, I like what they did with the armor in terms of the severely battle damaged one. Um, there's some interesting aspects to the way he repainted it when mm. he when he cleaned it up. I um, like that within the Mando we saw him do like so much more fighting, so much more sort of involvement than this kind of always sort of in the background, standing there being very cool in the original trilogy. And then we've seen him get to really sort of show what Boba's sort of cool is all about and uh, of course how cool is it for Tim to be able to do that role having you know going all the way back to 2002 with the Tick of the Clones and then it's sort of coming back like nearly 20 years later (laughs) and getting to sort of really personify this beloved Star Wars character completely um and and it was fun to see him taking it so sort of like he knows how big of a deal it is and he's you know he appreciates that sort of level of he's got an action style that fits in perfectly everyone locally loved what he his fighting style and the fact that it drew on his his heritage Mm. uh super cool and He's obviously developing a really good, strong relationship with Robert Rodriguez. I wouldn't be surprised. Robert Rodriguez famously um, is quite loyal to, to the way he uses um, actors. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Timmy Morrison showing up in other, other of his non-Star Wars works as well down the line. Yeah. That's an interesting side issue. Yeah, I'm I'm super keen for that. Like, I wasn't – when back before there was any live action and people talking about different shows and they're like, oh, it's going to be about Boba Fett and then it turned out to be a new Mandalorian. I know some people really were hoping it was going to be about Boba Fett, but obviously the Mandalorian has become such a success. So it's fun that they have actually gone back and sort of double-tapped the Mandalorian culture because – Boba Fett is so popular and I've always been like a huge fan of Kenobi but just the the episodes of the Mandalorian that do have Boba Fett in it has me really really amped for this whole series like they've given us like a little taste so we don't know if it's going to go back and show us what happened sort of a little bit of a maybe a um, flashbacks to um, Tatooine and the Salak pit. Are they going to explain it or are they just going to sort of keep it a mystery and then just kind of jump to what he's doing now? Um, so I'm super excited and very excited that uh, they're pulling in um, Ming-Na Wen more. Um, I think she's a fantastic actress and I'm really excited by her new character and the fact that they're plugging in her all different places. I've, I've got... Um, Really excited when that little teaser at the end, when you realize that she wasn't dead and and how they're pulling her in. I'm really hoping that they we really get to see more um, of her character and her backstory and what she's all about. All right. I said uh, at the start that we'd run through all the upcoming Star Wars series and movie announcements that we were aware of. Let's do that now and just touch on each of them. I've compiled a list in the order that we're expecting to actually receive them and um, to the extent that we know it, and it's kind of interesting just to think about them in that order. So we've got the Bad Batch coming out on May the 4th of this year. 
but that's not the only one coming out this year. Uh, Star Wars Visions, which uh, we don't know a lot about the format. We know that it involves a number of anime artists sort of reinterpreting events or characters within the Star Wars universe. That's coming out this year as well, later in this year. We haven't been told when that's coming out, but we we do know that there is going to be a tie-in novel coming out in October um, entitled Ronin at this stage by author Emma Maiko Kandon. And it wouldn't be surprising if the series was actually released around the same time as that novel. Book of Boba Fett is coming out in December 2021. Mandalorian Season 3 is coming out that same month. So we're going to have concurrently running episodes. We don't know if they're both going to release on Fridays as they previously have or if they'll spread them over the week. That's not sure, I'm not sure how to process that. If they both drop on the same day, fans are going to have to pick and choose which episode to watch first. Yeah, uh, the, the concept of having two series running concurrently yeah, is a little bit mind-blowing considering yeah. you know, how long we've been Star Wars fans and how you know, some of the huge gaps between content that we've experienced. So the uh, Book of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian coming out in December 2021. Obi-Wan Kenobi coming out early 2022. The Cassian Andor series, Andor. Uh, 12 episodes in duration, we believe, uh, coming also out in 2022. We don't know the date for that, but they are filming that one right now. If you're keen, you can look around the internet and find uh, spy photos of the sets where they're filming. So we know that's solidly into production, so that's probably going to be quite early next year. Ahsoka, Rangers of the New Republic, both of those with sort of overlapping timelines, are com- overlapping in-world, in-story timelines coming out in 2022. Uh, we don't know a lot more about that yet. The Acolyte, which is um, uh, another sort of mysterious story uh, with a name that implies it's going to involve the Sith in some shape or form. That will be showing up in 2023. The Lando series, again, a little bit mysterious. We don't know if it's animated or live action. We don't know if it's Donald Glover era or Billy D. Williams era or both in some shape or form. That's coming in 2023. And then, of course, in December slash Christmas of 2023, we see the uh, we head back to the theatres to see Rogue Squadron. It'll be a while since we've seen something in the theatres by the time that comes around. Uh, but having really enjoyed Rogue Squadron stories in the comics and the books in the distant past, I'm quite keen to see how that one pans out. A droid story is uh, animated, I believe. We don't have any date for that one. And Taika Waititi... Um, also has a Star Wars project, a little bit mysterious, but they've confirmed that a co- at a couple of points along the way. That'll be probably at least a couple of years away at this point. So this is a fantastic lineup. Of course, they tease these things during that big um, Disney sort of Investor Day presentation where they gave us little hints and things of each of it. And I'm sure the fans have had great discussions about which titles they're most excited about. But honestly, with the way that Hollywood has been impacted with um, the global events, I'm just excited to see Disney sort of being able to sort of pivot and find other ways to still give us content. You know, we could have been looking for sort of a bleak few years, but with the way of pivoting to live action TV series instead of relying solely on box office movies, like, you know, the original plan of one every year, this is like giving us so much more than just three hours of Star Wars, or two and a half, you know, um, at, at the in the theaters once a year. This is this is terribly exciting. And I know I've got my favorites and I'm sure there's going to be boatloads of merchandise with all of this. So I'm kind of glad that there's a little bit of a gap before this juggernaut really starts going later on this year because um, I'm sure a few people out there are still buying up all the Baby Yoda and Mandalorian merch they can get their hands on. I can only imagine what's going to what's going to be hitting our shelves locally once this stuff starts to come out um i'm certainly i'm actually really looking forward to seeing a lot of boba fett merchandise there hasn't been much variation most action figures or things tend to tie around like one or two scenes in in the original trilogy so it'll be really fun like the um we've got a glimpse of what can come from that beautiful hot toys that hot deluxe, toys deluxe boba two fett crazy figure yeah. with um Timur's face it's like yeah I can see more of this coming on the horizon, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah, so we're going to have Tamira Morrison in, in a Black Series scale, probably in Gentle Giant, bus, mini bus scales. Yeah, that's going to be awesome, yeah. 
And of course, um, just as a little side note, the bounty hunters in general have always been popular. It's going to be fun to see if they bring in any of the other classic ESB bounty hunters. Yeah, please do. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be fun because we don't really know. Um, like some of the old expanded universe books might have given them ultimate fates, but because this is a blank slate, Disney might decide to bring back some things. Like obviously the awesome IG Eleven, sort of bringing in a little bit of that into the Mando. But with Boba Fett, he knows these other guys. They could totally bring in some of those classic Sadly, we'll, ESP era ones. We'll probably which never get. Some... We'll probably never get an IG Eleven, IG Eighty Eight crossover. Um, <laughs> given what we saw in uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The Mandalorian. But, yeah, it, it'll be great to see, you know, Boss, Dengar, Forlom, Zuckus, any of those any of those dudes. Okay, I want to talk about Disney Plus now. Some of you will be listening to this earlier in the day. Some of you might be listening to this um, beyond April the 2nd, so you'll already know about this. But without a lot of fanfare, a huge amount of new Star Wars or old new old Star Wars content has been dumped on Disney Plus. Importantly, the Gendi Tartakovsky Cartoon Network Clone Wars micro series uh, from what year did that come out? It was it was between episode two and episode three, yeah. so it was around two thousand three, two thousand and four yeah. when it originally came out. So that both what they call volume one and volume two of that it was originally re- released um, online um, in small chunks, but compiled together it makes up the, the size of a full movie. It's a couple of hours in duration. Uh, volume 1 and Volume 2, that's out now. People who are familiar with it love it, generally love it. They love the animation style, they love the writing. It's been quite hard to find through official channels. You basically had to have it on DVD. It's nowhere to be found you know, above board online. So this is a really good opportunity to check it out if you haven't seen it or revisit it if it's been a while since you've seen it. I know you like it a lot. It was. It's still an incredible nostalgic thing for me because it was that thing that filled the gap between episode two and episode three back in the old days of the hyperspace fan club where you you know belonged to the club of the official Star Wars dot com website and there was like this huge sort of community of people that would be eagerly awaiting these little five minute videos every week that sort of all um all joined together to tell a story and. There was a huge line of merchandise around it because there was that weird, you know, three year gap between episode two and episode three. So a lot of the merchandise of that era is of the, of the micro series animated style. They did, you know, character keys, there's action figures, um, and, and statues and things like that. So that was in my sort of early era of collecting because, you know, Episode one was, you know, when I was still too young to sort of really jump into collecting. So the sort of episode two and episode three areas where I really started getting in. So a lot of what I collected early on was the micro series stuff. And I'm still incredibly nostalgic for it. There's still pieces that I still really want to hunt down. So I can't believe that I thought this would be something that would always be locked away on Cartoon Network and, and Lucasfilm would never be able to sort of get their hands on it and stick it on their own platform. So I am beyond excited because it is so hard to find. They never released it on Blu-ray as far as I'm aware. They did a small release on DVD yeah. that was even hard to find even back then. Um, and so that's sort of been a prized possession of mine. And now everyone will get the opportunity to enjoy this awesome little animated series so it's called clone wars but it's it's different from the clone wars uh it's been referred to as the clone wars micro series or the cartoon network micro series or the gendi tartakovsky micro series but you'll you'll better spot it on disney plus check it out also on disney plus are the two ewok movies from the 80s a they're post return of the jedi so 84 and 85 ewoks caravan of courage and ewoks the battle for endor they're a little dated, but they were written by George Lucas and, and endorsed by him. Um, kids will probably love them. Show them to your kids. Watch them for a bit of nostalgic, uh, a bit of a nostalgic experience and and um, of significance. I like the fact. I like the battle for Endor. It has the first appearances of Blurgs in stop motion animation form, which is um, one of the highlights of a otherwise slightly quirky film. The story of the faithful Wookiee is a title that you may not recognize, but what it is is the animated sequence from the Star Wars Holiday Special that first introduces Boba Fett and stars 
and Chewy, you know, Leia and the droids. And again, that's that's the highlight of the holiday special. They've managed, they've decided to extract that and put that online um, without the rest of the holiday special for probably obvious reasons. But fun animation style, fun story. The first appearance of Boba Fett, very cool to check out. And finally, the Ewoks animated series, again from the 80s, season one and season two are up on Disney+. Plus. There's also a droid series, a number of episodes of droids, but they aren't, are not available on Disney Plus yet. Hopefully we will see those because that pretty much rounds out all the vintage mm. content. Yeah, it's quite impressive that these might not be, they're sort of niche things. There are fans that absolutely love them and are frustrated with how hard these things are to find and to watch and to share with others. So it's really fun that we're finally getting like 99% of all Star Wars media kind of all in Disney Plus where fans largely around the world, I know Disney Plus is still not available in certain certain territories, but for a huge proportion of Star Wars fans, you're going to be able to have, you know, the absolute marathon of a lifetime yeah. if you really wanted to and just consume all of the all of the content that's out there. And if any of this vintage content is upscaled or remastered in any way, that will be very cool because the versions that are floating out there, whether they're you know under the table online or or the old DVD versions, are not HD. Um, I'd love to see you know decent upscaled remastered mm. versions one way or another. Yeah, a lot of the holiday special ones are you know a VHS copy off off the off the uh, old low scale broadcast. Yeah. You know, so they they must have the original animation. Yeah, I've got a straight-up VHS copy of it, but that's low def. Okay, so following on from the tradition of our previous podcasts, we run through a number of the store reports that we've covered on the SWNZ website. It's been a little bit light for you know new product recently, to be honest, but there's a couple of things that have really stood out. There's been some new pops. There's the Star Wars concept series pop vinyl figures from Funko, they're based on Ralph McQuarrie concept art. There's Darth Vader, Yoda, C-3PO, and R2-D2. They join some other previous um, Ralph McQuarrie art-based Funko characters. They're available at Mighty Ape and others for around about $25. EB Games has another Gaming Greats Black Series 6-inch exclusive figure, the Imperial Rocket Trooper figure from Battlefront 2. Unfortunately, they price these quite high because they have you know exclusive rights for them, so that's $59. But if you've been collecting the gaming grades, or if you're a video game fan or a Battlefront 2 fan, then this figure is kind of fun, kind of cool. Uh, another quite cool new Funko Pop figure that's shown up at Mighty Ape and others is the Funko Virtual Con 2021 exclusive Yoda. The thing that makes him unique is the fact that he's green, and that might not sound too unusual or unique, but he's just in green tones and he has a green box, and it's quite a neat effect, uh, despite sounding pretty lightweight in terms of exclusivity tends to be priced a little higher than the standard Funko figures at uh, $29. We caught into Cotton On the other day and was surprised to see how many new Star Wars t-shirts they have because their website does not show any new Star Wars t-shirts. But there's quite a good range. If you're uh, near a branch of Cotton On, you feel like you need some more Star Wars in your wardrobe, check out the lineup of Star Wars, mostly Mandalorian themed uh, Star Wars t-shirts that they've got at the moment. They had a good variety of colours. These are all in the men's uh, t-shirt section. They had a sort of Mandalorian poster artwork one, a bunch of Grogu Baby Yoda ones in a variety of styles, and they also had a embroidered Baby Yoda hat, a uh, baseball hat, yeah, which, was, which was quite fun to see. But yeah, frustratingly, not on the website. So if you don't live near a cotton on, that's uh, a bit frustrating, but... For those of you in Auckland and other areas that do have cotton on branches, it's definitely worth checking them out because they do have a um, sort of a buy two promotion. So you can get a second one often on sale. Yeah. There are some new action figures on the horizon, either um, imminently or within the intermediate future. Uh, the Mandalorian retro figures should be shown up from a few retailers if you pre-ordered them. A number of those are sold out. Some of them are a little harder to get now. Um, but if you shop around between Toyko and Mighty Ape, EB Games, you can possibly pick them up. There's, there's a half dozen and seven maybe in that lineup. Uh, but new vintage collection as well. There's a wave that includes Boba Fett, Grief Karga, uh, Grogu with his Hover Pram, and original trilogy Snaggletooth. Now they retail for about $27.99 and they're available for a number of different retailers, including Mighty Ape, if you want them delivered to your door. 
I want to talk just quickly, since we're talking about store reports, about the Black Series helmets because we've got a very cool lineup of those available now or available in the near future. Particularly excited about the First Order Stormtrooper, which we haven't seen in an, in an affordable format at all, you know, since the sequels came out. But the First Order Stormtrooper helmet, it's pristine in terms of its design and accuracy for the price point. It comes in at $229 and that's going to be released in September of this year. There's a new version of the, there's a couple of versions of the Boba Fett helmet. One based on his final appearance in The Mandalorian. They call it the rearmored version. It's the repainted version. That's due in January of next year. You can pre-order that for $249. And there's been reissues of the ESB version, the Empire Strikes Back version of Boba Fett's helmet, which will be out in about August of this year. Quite excited when we're talking about Mandalorian helmets to talk about the Din Djarin helmet, which is due in a couple of months in July of this year. You can still pre-order that from a number of different places for $259. I think those are the highlights from the store reports. So that's about it for this installment. I guess we are now done doing talking. Thank you for listening in. Stay tuned to our website, swnz.co.nz, for Star Wars news for New Zealanders. And we'll be hitting another podcast episode next week. You can jump over to either our Facebook group or the SWNZ message boards to discuss all the latest Star Wars news with other Kiwi fans. And don't forget you can now listen and follow SWNZ podcasts on Spotify. Link below. Thank you for listening. And may the force be with you. If you enjoyed today's podcast, go ahead and like the video, check out the SWNZ podcast playlist for our other episodes, and subscribe for alerts about new episodes. See you next time.